In this video, I'm going to show you how to set heading levels in Microsoft Word and maybe explain some of the reasons why you would want to do so. So in Microsoft Word, well, let's, let's talk a little bit about the purpose of, of heading levels. Heading levels provide a variety of ways that assist readers of your document in navigating your document. Heading levels also provide a very important structure in your document for accessibility for students who have a visual impairment or who are blind because they likely will be using a piece of software called a screen reader. And screen readers rely on heading levels, properly formatted heading levels, in order to allow the student or the, the, the reader of the document to quickly scan and navigate through the document. And this is specifically useful for when your syllabus is in Word document form. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how to set header levels, how to format them, and some of the affordances or advantages that this provides all of your students, no matter their, their visual ability, uh, whether they're sighted or they have a visual impairment, so far as navigating a document. So to begin with, one thing I want to point out is on the left-hand side of Microsoft Word. Typically, when you create a brand new document, the navigation pane is automatically open. And actually, it provides some instructions or some guidance. Uh, and here it says, create an interactive outline of your document. Uh, it's a great way to keep track of where you are or quickly move your content around. So you're going to see this change as we add heading levels. And when a student or a viewer of a document opens your document, they're gonna be able to click on the various header levels in this pane and quickly navigate or jump to a particular section in the document. Now, of course, you can close this pane, but if you want to bring the pane back, then what you would do is you would go to view and then you would click on right here, navigation pane. All right, let's go back home. So in order to uh, think about heading levels and we want to think in terms of a convention that is followed by uh, screen readers but also we want to think of how we format our heading levels visually. Think of a, a textbook. Uh, I don't have an example of one here right now, but you have a, at the beginning of a chapter, let's say, in a textbook, you have a title of the chapter. And then after that, you have main headings that introduce big ideas or concepts. And under those main headings, you'll have subheadings that introduce different components of those ideas or concepts. And sometimes you'll have subheadings of subheadings. And so that they kind of expand on a specific subheading idea. So we kind of take that approach when we think of using heading levels in a, a text document like a Microsoft Word document. So my recommendation is that at most you have five levels uh, of heading levels and they're not automatically they don't they're not automatically listed here uh, as you generate a list of heading level types you'll end up modifying what we call what Microsoft calls the styles menu and I'm going to expand this and you'll see that there's normal. Normal would be like your regular paragraph body text. Then there is uh, no spacing, which I wouldn't touch. I wouldn't bother with that. 
Then you have a heading level one and a heading level two and a title. So we're going to concentrate on heading level one, two, and the title. And then we're going to add uh, heading level three and four. You really shouldn't need anything more than up to heading level four, in my opinion. If you did, if if you find that you do, then you can easily create that, as you will see. So the one thing that I recommend is that if you're you're creating from scratch a new document, or even if you're modifying a document that exists already and that doesn't have heading levels applied, I would right away before I do anything else establish the heading levels that I'm going to use and I'm going to format them. So I'm going to walk you through that. So so I got to decide what heading levels do I want? Well, I want a title. So I'm just going to type title and then I'm going to hit my enter key and then I want a heading one which already exist in the styles menu and then I'm going to do a heading two and a heading three and a heading four chances that you'll need a heading four maybe are minimal it just depends on what you're doing but in in this example that's what I'm going to do and so I'm doing I'm going to think of two th two things here first of all i'm going to make sure that i that i create like the these three exist already title heading one heading two i'm going to end up creating a three and a four and i want to think in terms of of how i want to format them so that that there's this consistent approach to what they look like and visually how they indicate the hierarchy of information throughout your document. And that's another big part of establishing uh, heading levels is that it establishes a hierarchy, a relationship of chunks of information to one another. And of course, the title would be the highest level of, of heading level. And then in our case, heading four would be the lowest level. And to kind of give students a visual cue as to the the level would be the size of the font and perhaps maybe bolding the font as compared to other fonts. So uh, for the title, if you, right now all of this is set at the normal or body text setting, all of this. So I want to set my title this text as a title text so I got expand the menu and then I'm going to click on title and you'll see that there's a default formatting on that now I want I personally want a bit more control I don't want to give it to Microsoft but I'm, I'm going to walk you through what this will look like so I, right now I'm just that set as title then I'm going to select heading level one. I'm going to click and expand this and I'm going to turn that into heading level one. So you see that Microsoft, this is uh, Calibri Light or Calibri Light at 28 points. And then heading one is the same font at 16 points. So then we're going to go, we're going to set this one at heading level two. We're going to expand this menu and select number two. Now you'll notice that once I've selected this as heading level two, Microsoft Word has automatically generated for me a heading level three. So I'm going to select on heading level three, and I'm just going to go right in here and select that. And then you'll notice that it is automatically generated a heading level four. So I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna select heading level four. So you see that Microsoft has already gone ahead and through their default formatting styles, each looks a little bit different. And you'll notice down here 
that heading level four is at 11 points, heading, and it's italicized, heading level three is at 12 points, number two is at 13, number one is at 16, and the title's at 28. And you can keep that if you want. My argument against changing it, or, or for changing all of this, is that your body text should really be set at 12, and you don't want your heading text to be smaller than your body text. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start here at heading four, and I'm gonna actually make heading four, uh, and, and by the way, I'm gonna start showing you now how to set the formatting uh, defaults for all of your, your different heading levels. So for heading level four, I recommend that you make it 14. So it's gonna be a little, little bit bigger than your body text. I'm also gonna get rid of the, the italicization uh, of, of heading four. I'm gonna actually make it bold and I'm going to switch it to a black text. And we can keep Calibri light. You can change it to a different one if you want. I would recommend that you keep it as a sans serif font, such as um, Arial or Calibri light or Verdana. Um, I I'll keep with Calibri right now. So then I'm gonna move on to three. Now I want three to be a bit bigger than four. So I made four 14, so I'm gonna make I'm going to jump a couple, and I'm going to make heading three um, a 16-point font. I want to make that bold, and I'm going to make that a black-colored text. Let me back up for a moment, because I, I missed a very important step here, and that is that I've just changed the formatting for heading four to 14-point Calibri set, as a bolded text. And so I want to make sure that for the rest of the document, when I change text to a heading four, that it, it, it uses this, head, this formatting and, and text size. But that's not going to happen if I don't actually change it up here in the menu. So you'll see here heading four, it's still italicized. It's still at 11 point and it's still blue, but I want to change that and adopt this formatting. So I'm going to go up here to heading four, and I'm going to right click on it. And right here, the first selection in the drop down menu is update heading four to match stop selection. I'm going to select that, and you see how that's changed. So now, for now on, throughout the rest of the document, when I set uh, a text selection as heading four, it will have this formatting. Now I wanna do the same thing with heading three. I'm gonna select that text. I'm gonna to go to heading three, right click, update heading three to match selection. For now on, when I turn anything into, any text into heading three, it will adopt that uh, style, styling and formatting. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to change heading level two. And I recommend uh, going jumping up to 18, bolding it and changing it to black text. And then heading level one, I'm going to jump up to 20. And I'm going to bold that and uh, make sure that's black text. And then this is set at 28, the title set at 28, and I think that's fine just to keep it that way. So let me go to heading level two. I gotta change this one and update uh, heading level two. And then heading level one, let's expand the uh, menu and go here. And we're going to match selection, or match the formatting, match the selection. 
And then with the title, I'm leaving the same. Well, no, I'm not going to. I'm going to bold that. And then I'm going to expand this, um, find the title, and update title. So that's, that's how I would set the heading levels. And you can see there's this logical sequence uh, of the title being the largest. And then going all the way down to heading four, there's a logical visual cue of, okay, this one's slightly smaller than this one. And that's going to help your sighted students to more clearly identify the heading levels as they work through your document. Now, turning our attention back to the navigation pane, you'll see that when the student has headings selected, that they're going to be able to navigate throughout the document. So let's say it's your syllabus and they want to skip to grading. And let's say that your grading is here at heading level, uh, heading level four. I, that wouldn't really be the case, but I just want to illustrate that if they select, click on this, it will jump them down to that heading level. Okay, so I can go back up to number one and it would bring them back up to there. So that would provide your vision, your, your sighted students an advantage in navigating uh, the document so they can jump to specific areas in the document. And of course, with your visually disabled or uh, blind students who are using a screen reader to navigate your document, they're going to be able to tab through the heading levels really quick and identify the one that they want to jump to in a, in a more efficient manner. So that is all about heading levels in Microsoft Word and, and how to set them and, and why to set them and format them in a particular way.